Hey, okay, okay. So tomorrow it's a hunter. Because we've played paladin, we've played priest. We'll have some fun with the hunter. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, so I'm actually going to switch to gaming talk shows. I, technically, I'm not going to be doing a gaming talk show. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a fitness uh, Q&A and, and, and uh, food and stuff, because I promised I would do that for the, for the viewers. Um, you guys, like, somehow we came to the topic and I started talking about how I only worked out once a week and people were like, really, like, what the fuck? This is wrong and blah, blah, blah. And I really like talking about that. So uh, come back tomorrow if you just want to watch the Hearthstone. We're going to be playing uh, some Hunter. Doo -doo -doo. Let, me, uh, let me edit the uh, thing. Can I just do talk show? <laughs> talk man. What is talk man? <laughs> I guess we can do gamer related fitness. I guess that's gaming talk show, right? All right. Now, I don't pretend that I am an expert on, uh, on these topics. What I, do, um, what I do have is 10 years of experimenting uh, with, with various foods, uh, workout regimes. Uh, just I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, how do you say that? Uh, I'm addicted to that. I'm addicted to figuring out what uh, works, what, what, my, what my body what makes my body react in what way? Because um, like a lot of people, they, they, they just see what the mainstream does for, for working out uh, and eating and stuff. And they immediately, anything that like deviates from that, they instantly say like, hmm, that must be wrong. But if you look at how the mainstream person looks, then I think you need to question how, uh, you know, your standard diet is and uh, standard exercising and stuff. Because with, with very, very little exercise uh, and just good food, I, I've been working out like once a week for around two years now. And like I said, if I want, I can just become a little bit more muscular. That's purely like my, my food intake. The one thing that's keeping me from growing uh, more muscle right now is food intake because I just don't think it's worth it to become more muscular. I, I just need to eat way more calories than I want to right now. It just gets in the way of streaming, <laughs> essentially. Um, and uh, if I want to become a little bit more ripped, that's just uh, a factor of, once again, making the food even uh, cleaner, which right now is not nearly necessary. Uh, anyways, so you guys had a lot of questions back then. So if, if anyone has, uh, has just a straight up question, I'll, I'll put like the, the premises out there. Uh, I work out once a week and I do high intensity workout. Food is essentially a lot of a lot of veggies. Um, I try not to eat any like uh, like regular carbs, like um, bread and potatoes and shit. I do eat rice twice a week um, when I when I work out. Right now I'm working out twice a week, but I haven't worked out once a week for for two years. Uh, the reason I switched to two days a week right now is just because I love working out and I want to start working out a little bit more on my legs. So. Previously, I'd been just uh, doing a really uh, big lift, just uh, just squatting. Uh, right now, I want to put in some lunges, uh, squat, um, doing some some calf raises, just to get a little bit more, uh, you know, accentuation. So that's why I'm splitting it up into two days, uh, and also because I, I just love it. I love going to the gym. I love uh, eating a little bit more after a workout. All right, let's go. Uh, do you ever do strong lifts, five five or similar programs? No, May, like my, most of my workout background is bodybuilding related. I am not a strong man. I uh, I'm not a power lifter. I want to copy uh, what you are doing. Do you have a guide for your workout? No, but I can I can list it very I can list it very very basic. So. Uh, and once again, the thing is like the big thing with, with fitness and, and, and food 
is that it's more about concepts rather than like exact detail. I can tell you to do a deadlift or I can tell you to do a lat pull down. For most people, if you put in a back exercise there, it's kind of the same. It's not the same, right? If, if, you're, if you're like really, really knowledgeable in fitness, it's not the same. But um, for most people who just want to shape up a little bit, uh, lose a little bit of fat here and there and just want to have a muscle support, uh, like just something to get a little bit more in shape, that's fine. So what I do is uh, for, for the two years that I worked out once a week, I have one big leg exercise. I like to just do a squat, but once again, if you're if you're new to working out, you can just do uh, a leg press, right? Um, I have a I do a dumbbell press, but you can do a chest press. You can use it on a machine. So then we've got our legs and our chest. Then a big back exercise. I use the just the lat pull down uh, because I enjoy the exercise. Uh, the what else? So we got my legs, the chest, the back, shoulder. I like to do uh, just the shoulder press, and then I like to just do an uh, an overall exercise as well. I like to just put in uh, some push-ups, but that's just personal flavor. But as I had the uh, legs, chest, back, and uh, legs, chest, back, and shoulders. I think if you do that, you have your big muscle groups. I don't like to just isolate. I don't like to. Uh, do traps uh, isolated. I don't like to do biceps or triceps. Your biceps will get enough value from your back exercise. Your triceps will get enough value from your chest exercise. Uh, and then as for food, pretty much uh, just um, lots of lots of vegetables. Essentially, I like I like things very simple, but you don't need to copy that because I know a lot of people have a problem with uh eating the same shit all over but i i think it's easy if i know what i'm gonna cook in the morning <laughs> just work i just you know it's kind of a habit i wake up i make my food and then it's pretty much always the same so right now i eat one kilogram of spinach that's just frozen spinach uh, i just put it in a, a pot you, on the fire you thaw it uh pretty pretty fast it's ready uh, a can of lentils i think it's 220 grams and then uh, three chicken breasts or a couple slices of uh, smoked salmon. I eat that three times a day, just not three kilograms, but one kilogram and 220 split in three times. Uh, and then in the morning, I eat uh, three whole eggs. Uh, people will say, that's crazy for your cholesterol, you can't do that. But if you avoid eating things uh, like white bread, sugar, blah, 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 those things have way more impact on your cholesterol anyway, right? Because uh, excess sugar, uh, you know that that's, uh, that's, that doesn't stay sugar, right? That gets, uh, and the thing is like, I have all these, I have all the knowledge, but putting that in English as well is not that easy. Uh, I guess the specific process I would have to uh, read up again, but essentially if you have too much sugar, it gets stored as fat. And I know that's extremely superficial, but if you, if you want to just get the concepts down, that's, that's what you need to know. All right, let me, uh, let me go on to some questions now that you guys, now that I explained everything. Uh, what specific advice would you give to someone who is working up to go hiking, climbing small mountains with a path? I already bike a few times a week, but I know I could do more. I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert on that, Eltane. I don't like it when people say like, oh, you should do this or this or that. Um, I don't go hiking myself, but overall, I would say uh, just work on your, your general, uh, like, uh, like your big exercises, right? No, like have a little bit of strength in your, basically the, the workout regime that I said, if you have a little bit of strength, um, but definitely uh, like focus on your legs. Uh, but once again, like this is the thing, right? I would, I would just do an all rounder just cause it's a lot easier. Uh, but you, you're probably better off finding someone who is knowledgeable in that area. I'm assuming I'm not going to do anything about my diet. What's the best advice you have for a shifting belly? Uh, uh, nothing. No, fix your diet. Trying to get a good body without having a good diet is like shipping water out of a sinking ship. I, it's, it's funny to see all these people like going all in on cardio. Just be like, yeah, as long as I just eat crap and burn a lot of cal calories, I can do it. Like, it is so inefficient to lose weight by burning calories instead of working on your diet. 
it's yeah i used to do that as well right i used to think like yeah as long as i can just do a lot of cardio and burn all the car I, I don't do any cardio right now other than the cardio i enjoy which is uh riding my bike to the gym right um and right i just just have good food and you don't need cardio I'm, I'm pretty strict in that i don't like to i don't like it when people say like i'm not gonna fix my food but fix my belly that's not how it works you get used to diets like in the span of a week essentially uh what are the basics of a good diet you're eating rice twice a week so me eating rice twice a week is just to uh keep up a little bit with the workout i feel if you work out uh, not introducing any any uh, any carbs that can lead to you know feeling a little bit lightheaded etc etc I've had that I don't like that uh, I know people that don't uh, introduce that on and are still fine it's just also how your body works if you're in uh, ketosis then you're probably gonna, not going to need that but I don't go into ketosis as a student whose budget isn't very large do you have any tips for healthier foods that aren't as expensive or at least last longer than fresh vegetables you can go for the frozen stuff, preferably bio. I don't, I don't like uh, eating stuff that has been sprayed, but uh, like mostly depending on where you live, right? The government has like a, a good limit on how much insecticides can be on the foods for it not to be harmful. I like not to take any risks and just eat biological vegetables. But if you don't have a lot of money, it's, it's probably fine to just eat frozen uh, non-biological vegetables. Mm. Yeah, and, and to create abs, it's nothing more than remove the fat for your belly. Uh, doing, this is funny, right? If you have a belly and you do a bunch of uh, crunches and stuff, you might even seem like your belly is getting a little bit bigger should your abs get a little bit bigger. Like creating abs, visible abs, is not about making them bigger. It's just about removing the fat from your belly. So that is done by good food. And if you want to accelerate that process, you can introduce... Uh, cardio but i like just doing cardio i feel is a really bad plan mm. what advice do you have for someone who has stalled on his lifts um introduce different exercises Walsy. uh try to do some uh, explosive uh explosive execution that is usually better for for strong uh for strong men uh also, 1.5 plate, what would that, what would that be? Uh, for some reason, that doesn't uh, ring a bell. That might be just because it's English. Uh, Want to work out together once in Antwerp during the summer? <laughs> sure, Kev. <laughs> if you can arrange it, that's sure, man. Don't worry. That's fine. Uh, how many reps of each exercise do you... Oh, I just left out a super important thing. Sorry. Uh, I don't count reps per se. I just do, I have execution until failure. Thank you for bringing this up because this is like a huge, huge part of everything, right? Uh, execution is very uh, slow and controlled. Be sending a message to your body doesn't depend on how heavy the thing is you're lifting. It's about how, um, uh, how much of a how much pressure on your muscle how 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 much tension so you can and once again this is maybe not 100 percent the same if you're going for, for strong lifting but if we're just speaking in terms of bodybuilding you can get the same result with half the weight if you uh, do the repetition super clean and do more reps and very slow so something that a lot of people do is when they do their exercise let's say an easy way like let me see if i can see myself right um let's say you're doing a chest press right i'm gonna see you guys can see me properly like this let's say you're doing a dumbbell press a lot of people they might do this they're like one and they lock their elbows like all your pressure on your chest is gone so what you have to do instead is very slowly let it go down and before you know your pressure like the the tension can be gone here as well if you just do like no, keep the pressure. Make sure your pressure, like the tension on your chest stays uh, optimal. Go up before you lock your elbows and slowly down again. Like to go to full fatigue, like at the, at the end, your muscle, like you start shaking a little bit just because it's like the absolute end. 
Now, obviously, if you're, if you're new to this, you're gonna wanna do this on a machine. You're not just gonna be like, all right, let's pick up some dumbbells. Shady told me how to work out. Just, and then that's how accidents happen, right? So do that on machine. If you, if you get more uh, knowledgeable, if you get more skilled with that, you can start using free weights. Uh, and that's with every exercise, just go into full failure. Uh, you want to send that message to your body. That's the most powerful message you can send. That is, what going, that is what's going to release the proper hormones for uh, the desired effect that you want to have. I was recommended a near pure protein diet for minor weight loss. What do you think of this? Uh, I think you just, just add veggies, dude. Like just add shit ton of veggies. Uh, because you'll literally get tired of chewing before you get fat by eating vegetables. If we're talking things like uh, uh, spinach and stuff, like I guess you could add beans. Beans have a little bit more calories, but still, like, just add a ton of veggies. Don't just go for protein. High in protein too, aren't they? Eggs? Yeah, eggs are eggs are high in protein. Uh, just catching up on comments. Mm. Be a fear. Realistically, some cardio is very good for you because it keeps the muscle from developing weak points. Too much cardio is, of course, a bad thing. I feel like that's really a point where you're what what you'd like to do, right? I mean, in, like when it comes down to it, it's your life. So I just hate it when people hate cardio and do it because they think it's the only way they can lose weight. Um, because that's I, I I used to hate doing cardio. Now I I kind of like it. It's funny how that shifted. It's probably because I did it so much back when I was actually bodybuilding and I was just going for the uh, you know in the in the cutting phase when you when you're just uh, trying to become as ripped as possible. Of course, when we're talking about like like the highest level, then of course introducing cardio is necessary because then those people are dropping down to like what three percent body fat. You're not just gonna do that by food. Uh, Muscle is strained in the gym, the weight is gained slash lost with food. Pretty much, yeah. You have to compare it to building a house. You can't just build a house with uh, skill, right? You're going to need bricks, you're going to need uh, mortar and stuff. Shady, I'm really skinny, 185, 60 kilograms. Every summer I work out almost every day, get to 70 kilogram. By the end of the summer, I lose it so rapidly during the year when I don't have time to work out as much. <coughs> Start try working out twice a week instead of uh, the entire time. Um, um, you have to imagine it like this. If you are working out and you work out before your muscle is fully healed, you are lowering your, your performance. Uh, so look at it like this. Let's say on a graph where this is your current performance maximum. If you have worked out that will drop because your muscle needs to recover. Uh, your body needs to recover in, in general from that, from that workout. So let's say you, you work out uh, every day. Uh, I used to work out six days a week with a, was that a triple split? Yeah, triple split. So I used to have workout A, B, C, A, B, C, rest, A, B, C, A, B, C, rest, or A, B, C, rest, A, B, C, rest. So, and, if you're like if you're trying to become like a like a bodybuilder and you have like really really a lot of calories to support that and it's like maybe even supplements to increase uh, regeneration and blah 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 maybe you can do that but honestly like if you're if you're just looking to gain some weight just try working out twice a week um, have one lower body and maybe like one upper body part and then one upper body uh, workout. Uh, lifts like just go to fatigue and then eat a lot <laughs> eat a lot eat a bunch of uh, eat a bunch of uh, protein but uh, also add a lot of uh, carbs like you just add brown rice and stuff uh, I'm not like this is I'll talk about this later but this is a little bit conflicting because I like to stay away from eating too many uh, carbs for other reasons but if we're just talking for aesthetic reasons you're probably better off eating a lot of those uh, if you're just trying to gain weight. Uh, the big guy at my work swears that weightlifting burns more calories in cardio, accurate or not. Depending on how you weightlift and how long, yes. Um, 
But that's, that's also a two-sided thing because by working out and creating muscle mass, uh, you, your body needs to maintain that muscle mass. So that means that in order to maintain the muscle mass, your resting, your, your resting metabolism is going up. So essentially you're going to burn more calories by sitting on your ass if you have muscle than if you have mostly fat. Um, so that's also part of his reasoning, most likely. Uh, most problem, most common problem for beginners is that there's no one to show them how it works correctly. Yeah, pretty much. You want to get some uh, guidance, um, but there is a ton of good guidance on the internet. Um, there's good books. Body by Science is a really good one. Uh, Dr. Doug McGuff. He, yeah, like he's he's the reason I'm training like I am right now. And I haven't regretted it. Um, what else is a good workouts book? The Four Hour Body by Tim Ferriss is very practical. Gives you a lot of uh, tips for diets. There are little things to make it easier, right? Things that you don't uh, develop, like that much hunger or whatever. Uh, things that slow your stomach from emptying to create uh, a, a lower uh, glycemic jump in your blood. Uh, so four hour body by Tim Ferriss and uh, body by science by Dr. Doc McGuff. Those are two really good books. Uh, does a moderate amount of alcohol fit in a healthy diet? Um, I like to just avoid alcohol, but once again, it's your life. And like, honestly, this is the thing, like people try to do it 100% perfect. I'm going to be very crude right now because <laughs> I feel like that's the best way to put it in a perspective. You can have 99% efficiency, you know, I have everything tip top, your sleep is maxed, your food is maxed, your, your health is super good, you're set up to go to live 100, and then you get hit by a bus the next day, right? So that can happen. So like, live your life as well. Don't like do it up to the degree that you like it. Uh, but learn to like enough of it, right? Don't you be like, well, I don't like walking, so I'm just gonna sit here, right? <laughs> like there are things you can learn to like, um, but don't don't be too strict. It's still your life, right? Enjoy it. So uh, I'm not gonna recommend that you drink alcohol, but as long as you keep it in moderation, like you really have to monitor that yourself. But I would not I would not recommend. And if I if I would recommend it, I'd probably go for red wine because red wine at least that's you know it's it's better than beer or uh like white wine in terms of your uh your the aesthetic factor um what type of exercise do you recommend i just went over that marta pants uh you can watch that in in the vod what can i do to fix my diet to reduce my belly fat uh like i said just cut out okay so I'll, I'll put a recap on that because that's probably, honestly, if, we, if we're talking about that, that's the thing that people are going to want to know mostly, right? Uh, how do I get ripped? How do I show my abs? I think if we're talking for most people, like the, the, the majority wants to know how, how they can lose fat, right? So, and then once again, I need to make sure that I get it right because um, this is mainly also the four hour, four hour body uh, by Tim Ferriss that inspired that. But you want to just stay away from uh, sugar in general. So bread is considered sugar, right? In, in my, like, just that, that type, like the carbohydrates. So uh, stay away from just rice, stay away from bread, stay away from pasta, stay away from anything that has uh, sweets in it, like no, no orange juice, even no fruit. Uh, just uh, go with uh, lots of vegetables, uh, quality meat, fish, um, eggs, those things that will, uh, allow your body to, um, have a much, much, much lower. This is also a, a vicious circle, right? So if you eat the way I just said, if you're not living on bread and, and pasta, essentially people who live on that, they go from meal to meal and they kind of like barely hang on to the next one. So this is what happens if your if your meals are full with these with these carbohydrates. You eat them, they get absorbed pretty fast, and they cause a uh, like a big spike in your blood sugar. Now, because of that big spike in your blood sugar, you're going to uh, make a bunch of insulin. 
because the insulin will turn that uh, and, and will store it uh, as glycogen. Once again, if any of the terms are off, pardon me, uh, I'm not 100% used to doing this in English uh, and it's been a while, but you guys get the reasoning, right? So eat things like white bread, pasta, gets absorbed fast, big blood sugar rush, a lot of insulin. Now, because you're making additional insulin to deal with that spike in blood sugar, you uh, at some point the, the influx stops and the insulin will drag your blood sugar down again, right? Uh, because like your body isn't like 100% like adjusted to that. Uh, so that will then cause a, a additional craving, right? So consider that like a loop of say a couple hours. So eat the shit, get a bit of a high, lots of energy, then blah, low energy. Does this sound familiar to anyone? You've, you've eaten, you're good to go, and then a couple hours later, you're just like, oh God, I need to eat something. So that's, that's how most people go around their days. Now, if you have a very steady, um, like when you eat uh, things that don't make your blood sugar jump, you have a very steady uh, blood sugar which means that it's, it's very steady throughout the day. It will only jump a tiny bit if you eat the proper things. And there's even like little tricks you can do, like uh, adding lemon juice before a meal or uh, uh, even doing small exercise before and after. Once again, these are little things you, you, can, you can read yourself in the four hour body. Um, but the, the, the main thing is that I'm not that hungry if I don't eat for seven or eight hours, which is funny. Uh, but I'm really not. I just eat mostly because uh, you start feeling bad if you don't eat, right? That That's something you don't really avoid. It's not like, eat like I do and don't eat for 24 hours and feel fine. That's not what we're saying here. You still want to eat. Uh, like, I eat, I eat four times a day just because I need enough calories. Because if you're eating a ton of vegetables and stuff, if you leave out the things that have a ton of calories in them, you need to eat more in order to have enough calories to not uh, start losing weight all of a sudden, which is good if you're trying to lose weight, which I'm not trying to do right now. Anyways, um, I digress. So that is the main, that is the main reasoning for uh, cutting out uh, things like rice, pasta, bread, uh, and to a degree fruit. Uh, that one's a really, that's the one's a touchy subject because people will be like, no man, you can't cut out fruit. Fruit's super healthy. And yeah, fruit is healthy, but if you're trying to lose weight, it's Bit counterproductive. All right, Whew, lots of talking. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, let's scroll down. Blah 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 blah. Show us your biceps. <laughs> I will one of one of these days. I'll make a picture when I'm fully pumped up, uh, and then I'm not. I'm not sure whether I'll try to add a bit more muscle or just cut it down or keep the same. But uh, I'll see. Yeah, this is the thing, right? There's a lot of people that say, I don't know why you think two times a week is working out. And it's funny because uh, a couple years ago, let's say five or six years ago, I may have said the same as this person. And I'm not even going to say that I'm right. Because there's just so much stuff. Like his, his, uh, interpretation, of, his interpretation of gains uh, might be completely different, but... Like I said, I, I, I can show you a picture in a couple, like in a couple days if I can uh, get one when I'm fully pumped up. Um, and that's from working out once a week for over two years. And then I'm, I'm even saying twice a week, but it's not even, it's not even saying that it's better uh, twice a week than once a week. Because uh, you need to recover anyway. And if you do all your muscle groups in one day, it's okay to rest for one week. Your food is 50% of the training, way more, way more. If you're talking about, if you're talking about just aesthetics, food is way more than 50%. If we're talking about effort, right? And, and like involved, cause like I said, my workouts, if I do my workout properly, I can probably get it down in five to 10 minutes. If I do it properly, right? Which is hard because it's, it's like you're going till failure. So essentially, if you train your legs until fa until failure, like you'll be 
like wheezing on the ground like because like, uh, it's like like a lot of blood uh that needed to just go through the legs so you'll actually need to recover for a little bit so i like to save my legs for last uh so i can just poof, fall down for a second and not uh focus on not dying um but yeah, it can it can be done in five minutes uh, till failure on the desired uh, muscle groups. And people will will you know this is the thing like people love to hate, so they'll say like, man, you're 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 like you're sick perf telling these people that you can get get uh, gains by working out five minutes a week. But yeah, it is possible um, with all the things that I just explained with all the science behind it. And once again, read read the books for yourself and try it out. Try it out. Body by science and for our for our body. Mm, what else is here? Don't get in shape in front of buses. I got it. <laughs> All right. You speak French? Can you find any French? Uh, no. <laughs> My French is not that good. Mm, what else do we have here? Do, 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 do. Okay, I caught up. I'm finally at the current chat. Couple hours later, I take a nap after I've eaten a lot. <laughs> yeah, as that's the same thing. Good, good thing for saying that, kid. Uh, if you eat proper, I, and, and like the way I like to eat, you don't have that. You don't have the oof. I've just eaten. I need to. I need to wait. Like you're, you're good to go straight away. When is the next tank top co-op with Merps? I don't know. It's been a while. Just give us a sneak peek. I can't because Twitch uh, regulations. I would need to show that on a like uh, Instagram or whatever. Facebook got taken down. Can't see those beautiful moves anymore. Yeah, if if I could still have a link to the Facebook, there's pretty much those that was back in my my glory days. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, if you guys have any if you guys have any specific questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm I'm finally caught up. You speak Flemish, yeah. I well, I suppose Dutch is the proper term, but I do speak Flemish, yes. Say something in French, we'll judge if it's good enough. Well, what is good enough, right? Mm. You don't see why fruit or even whole grains is bad. It's because it's still way higher on the glycemic index than uh, vegetables and. Uh, uh, just quality protein will bring you light shadow. But once again, this is the thing, like the, the main the main thing that I have to tell people is just try it out. What do you have to lose? Right? And when you're when you're when you're trying to learn and when you're trying to improve, and this is something that took me a while as well, you just have to stop identifying with what you believe in. A lot of people identify with what they believe in and then they find it very hard to learn other things. So like, no, I've learned this is how it is. And if someone says that it's different, that means that I'm wrong. And that's not the thing, right? I know that the things I'm saying here, 10 years later, I will know more efficiency. I will, I will have more information. Just yeah, That's just how it goes. You get older, you get smarter. There's, there's more research and stuff. Um, so I try not to identify with anything of the things I'm saying. Uh, if someone gives me a perfectly good explanation for other things or more optimal things, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go with that and I'm willing to try it out and, and see for myself. But a lot of people, they just lock, they lock into something. Uh, and this is really sad and they just defend that even in the face of evidence that whatever they believed is, is maybe not the best. Um, and that just limits you so much as a human. <laughs> it's crazy. And people tend to do that all the time. So yeah, if you want to, if you want to get better at life, essentially don't do that, guys. Uh, I'm buff as fuck, smart, great. Can you remain enemy to get rid of my huge ego? <laughs> awesome. Isn't glycemic index too much into detail for beginners? No, because that's the whole point, right? That's the whole point. That's the thing that's also going to keep you like, because a lot of people identify diet with being hungry. And that's the whole thing. If you're not going through that entire loop of because what most people do when they diet is they just eat less they eat less of the bad thing and is that efficient yes because you consume less calories and in the end if you have less calories you will if you if you 
if you consume less calories then you expend you will lose weight is that fun no because you'll be hungry all the time because you still have those spikes in your blood sugar uh, and your body will tell you all the time like oh the blood sugar is getting low do something about it the blood sugar is getting low do something about it that's why you'll be hungry that's why you'll feel bad and that's what will eventually drive you to just gorge on that entire pizza whereas if your if your blood sugar is is in a good position the entire day you will not have your body telling you well you should really eat that entire pizza right I mean, it might still happen just because you're like, mm, pizza, I remember how good that tastes or whatever. Uh, but your, your, your body won't like make it impossible for you not to do it. Because that's why most people, they, they have willpower and their willpower gets them so far. But you don't have to make it, you don't have to make it hard on yourself by going through that. That's why I think mentioning uh, glycemic index is, is almost like inseparable from, from losing weight. Ah, tu parles français? Oui, un petit peu. <laughs> petit peu de français. But it's been a long time, guys. It's like high school French. You should eat pizza. The pizza is happy. <laughs> All right, so are there any are there any more specific questions? Because uh, I, I can talk about this all day. <laughs> I love it, right? It's... It's one of my... It's one of my passions. It's something I don't get to talk about a lot because most people are... Like, like, this is something you learn throughout the years as well. Uh, people don't want your advice. They want your advice if they're actually working on it, but people don't want to hear any advice that doesn't suit them in their, in their moment. People need to be ready to hear this. So, uh, especially some people that might, some people might be uh, hearing this and they're not ready for it. And they're just like, yeah, man, this is so useless. I, I'm, I'm happy, he, I'm happy eating the way I, uh, I'm eating right now, I'm happy the way I'm feeling, and that's fine, right? People don't have to change, not at all. The advice is just there for when people are truly want to change. If someone, like you can't change people, right? People need to be ready to change, and then they'll absorb the advice. Throwing advice at people that are not ready to change is useless, absolutely useless. If people don't come to you for advice, then don't bother, right? Uh, da -da -da. What do you think about Soylent and similar products? I have not uh, studied up on that in depth. So once again, uh, that's one of the first things I, I learned as well is when you don't know enough about the subject, don't pretend like you do. So I have no, I have no uh, problem saying that I don't know enough about Soylent that I can say whether it would be good or bad for this, uh, for this topic. Do you prefer front, back squats, high bar, low bar? Pretty much just standard uh, 10 circles. Let me see if I can find execution video. It's bar behind, uh, behind uh, the neck, just on the shoulders. Uh, grip just, yeah, it's, it's hard, right? It's on, it's on instinct. Not too deep, just pure uh, good, good tension on the muscles. Uh, how much do I squat? Not that much right now. How much am I squatting? Because I, I need to get to fatigue safely, right? So I can't squat too too uh, too much. How much am I squatting to get to fatigue with right now? Um, let's see. Sixty kilos. 60 kilos I think maybe even 55 depending on how much the bar is so 55 to 60 kilos and that gets me to fatigue uh, but once again keep in mind that that is super strict form no uh, no lock-ins so there is always uh, pressure on the muscle and uh, I'll, I'll do an extra rep or two if that allows me to do it safely I go to the gym so I can eat a whole pizza. So I'm interested in advice on making the gym time more effective. All right, state, that's totally fine, right? If you would like to eat pizza and minimize the effect on that, because this is fun, right? Because this is things where if people tell me I'm not interested in the optimal shit, give me something that allows me to cheat my way a little bit through. I guess, once again, 
doing things like consuming lemon juice before eating the pizza, that will uh, reduce the, the blood sugar jump. I think that the numbers were around 10% uh, when, you eat, when you eat crap. So that would help. Um, and yeah, just uh, doing the lifting, doing the lifting uh, routine that I, uh, that I have uh, explained, uh, that will also help with your general metabolism, I feel. Mm. Well, that's the thing. And this is funny as well. Uh, some people will say, I, I can will my way through anything, right? And they'll will their way through something. But it's, there is no shame in doing something in the more efficient and easy way. Somehow people like they, they do like, like, oh, but that's easy. You shouldn't do that. It's fucking stupid to do something the hard way if you can do it the easy way, right? If there is the same result, less time investment, less willpower lost. I think it's fucking stupid to do it the hard way. Um, you're very free to do it, but don't then judge people for doing it the easy way, right? That's, a, that's the thing I'm saying. So as well, on top of that, willpower is finite. Like this is also something that I'm not 100% an expert in and stuff, but from essentially from what I've gathered, uh, your willpower is, is trainable. Uh, it's controlled by your prefrontal cortex and you have to imagine it like, like a muscle as well. So if you use that muscle the entire day to resist all kinds of things, at the end of the day, you're going to have way less willpower and going to be way more susceptible to gorging on shit or, you know, uh, sitting in front of the PC for five hours, even though you told yourself you were going to go to bed soon. Uh, this is just like, if this, any of this sounds familiar, let me know, right? Uh, just eating the wrong shit, uh, not going to bed on time, not doing that thing you told yourself you were going to do in the morning. Um, and and that's, that's mainly a result by your willpower being depleted. So it's just a good strategy to use as little willpower as possible on things that can be avoided. So you can use that willpower on, on the shit that needs to be done, like assignments, uh, discipline, et cetera, et cetera. And that's kind of also a snowball effect. The, the more... The more good habits you cultivate, uh, the, the easier it gets to, to add on to that. So if you don't know how to start with anything, just start with one small thing, right? Because this is also a big thing. Nobody explains to you how to get started because a lot of people, they don't see the struggle. They, especially if you're on the other side, right? Uh, let's say you have the side of complete lack of discipline for yourself eat whatever you want, go to bed whenever you want. You're not very happy with it, but you just can't seem to change it. This is not because you are a loser. This is not because you are cut from a different cloth than the people that are getting it done. It's simply because of events in your life and, and your habits have not been, uh, your habits have not been in the prop, uh, have, have not been molded. You know, you've not been molded in, in the proper way. Uh, just start with one small thing and let that snowball. So. Uh, like don't focus on everything at the same time. Um, just start with always going to bed on a certain time. Don't just put in the food and, and blah, 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 or start with going to the gym one time or read two pages from that book. Don't try to read the entire book, just read two pages, right? Just do small things and you'll notice that the more you do that, that it's actually easier because at the start, at the start of you, and sorry guys, once again, if I'm rambling, feel free to tell me, uh, but I, I really like, I really like this shit, right? Uh, at, I, I really considered becoming a life coach for a long time. And it's like, obviously, as you guys can hear me talking about, it's really one of my passions. To change your life, you have to start uh, somewhere and it's, it's a gradual process by by starting with a small step, uh, it's not just like hoo-ha bullshit of like, yeah, just start with a small step and you will get to a grasshopper. It's actually just, it's actually just the fact that things seem way harder than they actually are if you haven't done anything. So if you, if you start by doing small things, you kind of trick your brain into seeing it. Oh, 
it's actually not that bad. You, you have to get your brain on your side because for most of you, your brain is not on your side yet. You need to get your brain on your side. You need to show it that it's not so bad, right? Because when I, when I say to people, like if I was on my strictest regime for a long time, right? I would wake up, um, like this, is, this was when I was not streaming, but when I was like hardcore being efficient at life, helping my father out in the business, reading, reading a book a week, uh, just uh, yeah, being on top of my shit. I would wake up at like 6 a.m., take a cold shower just so I'm immediately awake. It's just pure efficiency, right? We're talking when I was, when I was hardcore and, and my habits were like fully developed. Uh, I would just take a cold shower so I was awake. It was just efficient, right? That was what it was all about. It was just efficient. And on top, it, was, it would build my willpower as well. Um, and just, like I said, efficient. Wake up, uh, cook all your meals for the day. Uh, that would take 45 minutes to an hour, depending on, you know, like whether how bad how fast I did it essentially um and then uh I would start reading uh on a book until it was time to uh do some uh, do some office work um I was also constantly uh feeding my mind with new information uh on on life coaching on on everything um just just doing everything to get more efficient and once you're at that point, it's just a huge snowball. You're getting efficient at getting more efficient. Like you see how that snowballs, even in the winter. Yep. Even in the winter, it's just cold. Like that's the thing, right? You can, you can change everything in your brain, right? The, I actually reframed the cold as helpful. And I was actually looking forward to that cold shower. It's crazy, right? Uh, but you can reframe almost anything. Anyway, so that's one end of the spectrum. Other end of the spectrum is sitting there and just being like, God, I have no self-control and knowing it, right? Just knowing it from yourself and kicking yourself for it. And it's just having a good strategy of going from one side to the other side. So don't try to do everything at the same time because I have fallen off the wagon many, many times. And so has every successful person, every successful person, uh, just could put that in your mind as well, right guys? Every successful person has fallen off the wagon numerous times. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's just like, well, let me just do 10 years of solid being efficient at everything. Everybody has their moments, right? Uh, and then the difference is that the people that are successful, they identify that moment and then just say, okay, what went wrong? What do I need to do to fix this? Uh, and then just, in my case, I just have my, my system of like, okay, just do one thing, do one thing and it will snowball. Um, that one thing for me could be like, okay, take some cold showers, just do, do that thing. Uh, like there was even a period I wasn't working out that I wasn't looking at my food, which was mostly, which was mostly after my first move, not, the, not this move. This move, I made sure that everything was on point, but my, with my other move, um, I couldn't cook for a while, so we had to eat some uh, like uh, sandwiches and blah blah blah, and I wasn't used to that. And then it's easy to fall into a bad into a bad habit, and then to break that pattern that actually went on for several months. So, like I said, everybody falls off the wagon. To break that pattern, I just started with one thing. Uh, what was what was my one thing? Um, I think the moment I fully broke the pattern was actually when I moved back here. That's when I fully fully broke the pattern. I'm now back on top of my shit. And that was uh, cutting all stimulants. So I could go to bed on time, which is something I'm not doing right now. I, I drank some coffee during the run, but it just helps me with the 110. So it's kind of like, eh, now, I'm, now I'm at a place where I can introduce the stimulants because I'll still have the, the discipline not to consume them uh, too late. So I will still, go to bed on time uh, but anyways uh, so I, I cut out the stimulants so that would make me tired at a, at a proper at a proper time then by going to bed on time I, I just said okay let's just do the easiest meal I know how to make and let's just make that every morning it was just cook some spinach open a can of lentils and slap some smoked salmon on that that's literally 15 minutes and your meals for the entire day are done Right, just trick yourself. Start with the, start with the super super basic easy stuff, 
And from that moment on, you'll actually want to do more. This is, this is how you get there. Start with laying one brick uh, just really perfectly and then the wall will come. Don't, don't be too concerned about the wall at the start. Start by laying a brick, I lay that brick really well and then the wall will come on its own. Uh, let me answer some questions again. What was the name of that book? Body by Science. So Body by Science by Dr. Doug McGuff. <clears throat> Uh, what else is here? I don't you hope live in Russia. I don't I don't yeah, you hope you don't live in Russia if you want to shower in it. Yeah, sure. I mean there's obviously things, but especially here in Belgium, even during the winters it's totally fine. Mm. What else do we have here? Does that mean you would never go to an all you can eat, Shady? No, there are times where I uh, actually go to an all-you-can-eat uh, rib, uh, just all-you-can-eat ribs. I just don't eat like a ridiculous amount. Um, I, eat, I eat more than I would normally eat, but once again, that's that's the part that I said, like you're still living a life. Um, so don't, don't be like focused with 100% efficiency and at the same time uh, forget to live your life it's like live your life but have have a balance right yeah exactly it's really a matter of tricking yourself into repetition and habits so just fix one habit at a time and then habits are so powerful it's crazy once something is a habit you guys know this right everybody has their habits so once you have a habit once that habit is solidified it's you can break it but it's hard and it's the same time, just once the habit is there, it's hard to break it. Even if it's like a habit which you would normally say, hmm, this is like, for me now, after doing it for a couple of weeks again, it's so, it's so natural to wake up and just start cooking my food. It's just, it's just, you're normal. Like you like, like, how do you say this? As a, as a human being, you just like, easy knowing what to do repetition that's like a, like you would, you guys would be so surprised how many of your actions every day are autopilot you think you have like full 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 control of your life and that you're um that you're making every decision consciously but that's that's not the case just pay attention to how much of your daily activity is on autopilot and that can be from automatically opening up facebook and then wasting an hour there or put turning on netflix or turning on a stream when you should be doing something else i'm kind of talking against my own shop here uh because streaming watching streams too much can also cause for inefficiency uh but hey i'm i'm more concerned with you guys their well-being right um it's just like so many of those things are on autopilot so it's once again a matter of getting that autopilot on your side rather than against you <sighs> what else we have here Mm. Oh, I'm going to highlight this ex food addict. Don't worry about it. I'm going to highlight uh, this talk. So if you want to catch it, this is I mainly did this talk because a lot of people were, were asking and I said, OK, I'll do it one time and then I'll make a highlight and then people can can watch the entire thing. Uh, start smoking for 16 years, break the habit. Everything else will seem trivial into comparison. That's that's one thing, uh, 10 circles. Something I like to do that is a lot faster. And, and once again, I'm sorry guys, if I know that this is something that some people may not think about a lot and it's really, uh, so if you, are, if you are sensitive to thinking about uh, things like death, you should probably tune out right now. Um, but death is something I use to put things in perspective. I like to remind myself from time to time that my time here on earth is limited. And a lot of people, they know this, but they haven't internalized it yet. To fully internalize that at some point you will no longer be on this earth. That's super heavy, right? A lot of people, they, they run in uh, all kinds of things. And obviously, if you have uh, a belief that you will go to heaven, that's perfectly fine. I don't mind that at all. I've, I don't think that's harmful. I don't have that belief. So for me, it's even more powerful. 
that every day here, like it's, it's not repeatable. So knowing that is super powerful to change yourself. And it's not very fun to think about that, but suddenly everything will make a lot more sense or the fog will clear. The fog will clear and you will see like, okay, if my time here on earth is limited, why am I not doing everything that I want to and uh, getting it done? If like, for instance, there's a lot of people that say, oh, if only I could find uh, a nice partner, if only. I was like, no, take matters into your own hands. Like if you don't put that in the frame of your own mortality, like as Zed says, it seems like you have all the time in the world and it's kind of a lot of effort to get into shape and it's kind of a lot of effort to learn about social dynamics and how to become uh, you know uh, someone who is better at attracting the opposite sex because that's once again a learning process nobody gets born super swag and just like yeah like you can have your upbringing give you all kinds of positive reference experience and then make you a playboy that's not most of us though most of us need to learn how to uh, be get good and that's that's obviously some people learn that very fast some people never learn that so I'm, I'm just taking this as a very specific example because this is a very big subject for a lot of people a lot of people uh, are not finding um, essentially the love of their life and they're kind of brushing it off like it's okay but put it in perspective of you having a limited amount of uh, on, amount of time on earth here you want to find a person that you you like or if that's if that's multiple persons if you're if you're not into monogamy that's fine right i i don't judge anything i think that uh whatever that's for that's for a different talk uh, but whatever um if you put it in the frame that your time here is limited and that you will disappear from this earth at some point everything will seem so trivial and you'll be like, how come I'm not doing everything that I want and then I'm stopping all those things that I actually don't want? Like I'm stopping watching uh, like YouTube videos when, when I should be in bed preparing for the next day to get shit done. Uh, I'm stopping smoking because it will reduce my time here. I'm stopping uh, my bad food. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to go to the gym. I'm starting to get that degree that I want perhaps. All these things will seem so much easier if you put it in the in the frame of like my time here is limited uh, so that's why i said that a lot of people are sensitive to that uh, i know that the first time that truly hit me god dude i was crying i was just i couldn't do anything i was just lying on the floor and just being i can't believe that this is actually a thing because nobody like truly believes they're immortal but until the point that is truly truly sunk in that it's at some point it's going to be over. Uh, I feel like that's an, that's a great asset. At the same time, it's a very sad experience, but it's a great asset to your life because whether or not you're aware of it, at some point it's going to happen, right? So I feel like I'd rather be aware of it and then get the most out of life rather than constantly push it back to the back of my mind and then at one point be old and say, fuck, I haven't done anything. Anyways, we're going to quit with that because it's a little bit... It's a little bit depressing, but at the same time, you can do beautiful shit with that, right? So use that up motivation to do beautiful shit with your life. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. It's, uh, it's a spontaneous thing, anti-social monkey. It's for the people, people are asking, and I don't mind it. How many eggs can I eat per day? I like to just stick with three whole eggs, uh, but I can I can see having two whole eggs. It's it's really a point of how f good your diet is, because this is also a point where I'm not a hundred percent on point. Because there's people who are in favor, there's people who are against it. My logic is if you don't eat crap, like you don't eat pizza, you're not eating ice cream, blah blah blah. What's a few eggs gonna do, right? Uh, a lot of people like the tunnel vision, they're like they're, they're eating their they're eating their potato chips, they're eating their ice cream, they're like, man, you eat three eggs a day? That's really bad for your cholesterol, right? I mean, uh, it's, you don't, like, put things in perspective, right? So, uh, when you go super deep into food and what it does for you, you learn that 
even healthy food has downsides. Like it's like there is no 100% efficiency, at least that I know of. Um, and that's when things get a little bit tricky. That's, that's when I'm mentioning things like brown rice. Brown rice, for instance, would be totally fine if you're bodybuilding and you need additional calories to build muscle mass. But uh, like if you're, if you're talking from a 100% health perspective, it will be better to avoid those grains, right? Uh, and, and those things, you can, those things you, can, you can see, for instance, um, Mark Sisson. Uh, Mark Sisson is a guy that has a blog, I think Mark's Daily Apple. There's so much things about food there. Uh, he's paleo and has a lot of, a lot of things on that. Uh, and I, I feel that paleo is probably the closest to optimal nutrition right now. So uh, I'm not 100% I'm not paleo because uh, they don't eat rice. But I like to eat some white rice to mitigate the disadvantages of grains because uh, the white rice is, is better than the, the brown rice and I then mitigate the, uh, the blood sugar jump by adding some lemon juice before I eat it and eating it with lots of vegetables and not eating it several times a week. <sighs> lots of talking, holy shit. Mm. The moral of life coaching is don't rope in real life. Pretty much anti-social monkey. Make decisions, have fun, and work on your life. We have here. Any other, uh, any other uh, questions, guys? Anything specific? Man, I can I can talk about this for a long time. Maybe I should wrap it up right now. I think we've done about an hour. Hmm. Only rope the good moments, yeah. <laughs> Only rope the good moments. How do you prevent the RSI do you have? Um, if you're talking about the how do I mitigate the disadvantages, is uh, I do exercises for my arms. Uh, there are uh, how do you call that? They're movements that your body is not used to. So part of RSI is learning your body that moving with your muscles does not necessarily equate equal pain. Uh, a lot of RSI is having a very specific movement cause pain and your body will build a connection with me moving my arms is pain so by doing um, like let me actually see if I can do one I'll be one uh, putting a wrist like this um, so wait let me see on my OBS that I can show it to you so this is something that you're not used to put your arms like this and then try to stretch your fingers but don't don't do this that's what you're used to right so a new, a new movement for your body would be to hold your wrists like this and then move your fingers. When I do this, I notice that my, my muscles are moving, but it doesn't hurt. And I can once again change the difference between, oh, I have done exercises, because if you do a lot of these, like your muscles become fatigued, uh, I can once again distinguish between my muscles are tired versus Fuck this hurts. Whereas there's usually a combination of both if you work with a PC all day, at least if you have RSI, um, and your body generally puts that in one pool as pain. So doing these exercises gives your body again uh, more perspective to separate that. Like this is being tired, this is pain. That sounds really weird, right? But that's that's part of RSI. It's uh, breaking that that link your body has made with uh, damn this shit hurts. Uh, I like to just also put up some ice. Ice helps as well, uh, and also just uh, the, mo the most the most uh, common sense thing is don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. That's with everything, guys. That's something I'm really bad at. But overdoing things will, in the long run, cost you time, which will completely nullify all the extra work you did by overdoing it. Now that's something which a lot of people don't. Uh, have any problems with? They're like, they relax a little bit too much, right? They, they relax a little bit too much. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Uh, I have a hard time relaxing. I, I like to go, I like to get shit done, uh, but I need to slow myself down a little bit so I don't overdo it and uh, slow down my progress in the long run. Uh, but for most people, <laughs> they need to step up a little bit. <laughs> they don't do enough. Uh, overdoing your girlfriend. All right, Zani. I, I knew that one was coming. Uh, overdone eggs are the worst. Yeah. Mm. Let's see. You just tried it in your hand, cramped? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, don't like... the. Actually, let me give you a link to those exercises so I, I you can have them explained properly. Novel movements, that's what they're called. Uh, this is a link of a... Uh, how do you call it in English? I'd, I'd say physician, but that's pretty normal. Uh, physical therapist, yes, physical therapist. Curious to hear your strength gains in the gym. What numbers slash lifts did you see increase with the program you're on right now? That's the thing. It's a bit harder to measure that because you're just going to fatigue. So, uh, but I have noticed that my strength uh, is, is really going up because sometimes I'll just be a little bit curious and I'll just do some, uh, some lifts. So from what I've done with dumbbell presses, I've, I've picked up... Um, two dumbbells weighing uh, 30 kilos, which normally I, uh, I work out uh, a lot, a lot lower and like super, super, super easily just push 12 reps doing it proper way, right? Uh, not super slow, like I would normally work out, but just 12 reps like you would normally do just up, no locking in and down and up and down, just the easiest 12 I could ever imagine. So. I have noticed a lot of strength gains if I would then do a more conventional uh, rep, rep, but I'm, I'm the, the, the way how I work out is it's extremely, um, it's extremely annoying, I'd say, to, to do it compared to that. If once you, like, you work out, you're like, man, this isn't really working out. It's just I'm doing reps. I'm not even, I'm not even like, uh, going to fatigue, so it's, uh, it's very different. Yeah, 30, 30 kilos uh, each each dumbbell and just not, not breaking a sweat, pull on 12 reps, so. Uh, what else we have? If you're learning about social dynamics, etc., as you were talking about earlier, how do you integrate this knowledge in your identity? Because it doesn't feel right to act the way you do after learning about it. It just seems pretentious. That's a good question. So, you guys want to hear the story of how Shady got good with girls or girls blah 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 <laughs> i'm betting a lot of you want to hear that but say like no there's just two people saying no go away i'll see if we have some people that want to hear that because that's a whole other story but that's i feel like that story can help answer siazo's question uh what else we have here uh, your biggest issue in life is discipline trying to work at it step by step with small things like doing your bed that's great Fu Manchu, that is great. Making your bed, that's the first step. That's actually part of uh, a book or uh, that I've read. Just doing one thing at a time. So yeah, make, make your bed, uh, brush your teeth at the same time, etc. Story time, yes, tell us. Okay, okay. So this might take a little bit, guys, but it's actually a fun story. I... Um, uh, like well, how far back are we gonna go right let's just say that i was extremely uh extremely uh poorly skilled uh socially i had very poor social skills i grew up uh being very good at games as i am at least i still like to be um but uh let's see how how would how would that have come to be uh I think just in, in general, not having the proper social skills and, and reading social cues makes it so that you behave in ways that uh, are perhaps not very attractive towards other people. Uh, so you would be uh, concerned with, with winning rather than uh, have it letting other people enjoy games. Uh, you just, you know, focused on results and stuff. So never really the type of person to just uh, hang out with friends more, just like focused on on games and, and how to do things properly. 
Um, so let's just see where would we be. Let's just say that uh, what, the time I left high school, right? So after I after I left high school, I would say that. No, we're going to we're going to go back a little bit further because I'm going to I'm going to I want to give you guys the full story. So because there there are different uh, there are different stages of, of this. Right. And I don't want to pretend like I am the poor man that had never known love or whatever. Uh, I don't want to pretend like like I'm not, I was pettier than I was uh, or sadder, whatever. But anyways, like up till. Let's see. Sorry guys, this is a little bit un unprepared. Like I uh, have to do a little bit of digging in my memory to make it right, because it's been years, of course. Uh, but I was like extremely unpopular in school as well until I started working out, right? So until I started working out, uh, that's, that gave me a little bit of confidence. Uh, I was still extremely insecure, but uh, it, it gets better, of course, when people, you know, when person after person tells you, hey, you're looking good, or Hey man, you're getting bigger, uh, stronger, and stuff. So that that immediately gave me like a huge boost. And without that, I would have, you know, been I would have been off worse a lot more. Uh, I got I had one serious girlfriend before uh, before the end of high school. And high school for me lasted until I was 20 because I did uh, I broke my I broke and dislocated my ankle once, which made me miss all the exams, and I. I skipped that one and I also skipped the year where I just played World of Warcraft. <laughs> I just didn't give a fuck. Uh, I was not in a very good place back then. But anyways, so high school ended for me when I was 20. Uh, and by the time I was 20, I had one serious relationship with a girl um, for a year. Um, and that was purely because I looked good. Uh, and that because I, you know, I worked out. And that's the thing. I was lucky in that regard that I worked out. I worked out in my, my, my looks. And by the way, looks are not as important as anyone thinks, right? Uh, like looks are so unimportant when it comes to attracting women. It's crazy. But anyways, uh, it's better to have some than none if you also have no skills. So that's essentially just being lucky uh, that I, I looked good and she was like a, a friend of a friend. And that's how that came to be. But then that relationship ended. And after you're out of school, suddenly you're like, well, I, I fell, fell. I obviously, you know, but for a gamer to fall out of school, because there was a there was a gap of a year between me leaving high school and me going to uh, study to become a personal trainer. Because I took a year. You top decked that girlfriend? Yes, pretty much. I top decked the girlfriend. <laughs> so uh, there was a year between me uh, leaving high school and that relationship ending. Uh, it, it ended shortly after high school ended, and uh, me um, going to, uh, I don't want to say college, but I'm going to say college because it was only one year of education, uh, which is like grown up education. Um, I did one year that got me my personal trainer degree uh, because it, it basically filters out all the things you don't need. Normally you would need around three years because they teach you how to, you know, be uh, a teacher in school and stuff but all that thing was cut out and you would just get your degree so you could go work in a fitness but anyways uh, that aside i'm gonna i'm gonna call it college but it's not college just for easy purposes uh, <laughs> so there's a year between me leaving high school and going to college in that year you can imagine you know as a gamer the first time you don't have to go to school yeah <laughs> Fuck yeah, um, that was that was the point where I actually convinced my my father I was like, I can become a pro gamer. Just give me time. I'll, I'll prove you. I'll prove it. So he gave like essentially he said like, all right, you can you can basically be a lazy bum for a year uh, in which I got like insanely good at Starcraft and League of Legends. Um, uh, like I, I played Starcraft 2 for four months and I, I hit uh, I hit masters. So I, I really, really religiously practiced that. Uh, but then I, I switched to uh, League of Legends, which is funny. <laughs> That's actually when my girlfriend dumped me when I switched from StarCraft to League of Legends, because I, I had been I had been telling her like, yeah, this is how I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it as a as a StarCraft pro, 
and then after that ended she was kind of done with me so that was actually it's funny to put all these memories back so i guess it's more it's more about me not following through on things and her seeing that there's there was also like some problems with her father not approving me of me and blah 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 blah. uh but anyways was, it's just a funny thing to throw in between uh, so anyways after that after that year ends um uh, i i choose to go to college uh, because um, at that point I had that deep realization of fuck I'm gonna die one day and I really want to do what I what I truly want to do which at that point was also get a girlfriend because I had been solo for a year then um, the, and once again this is not like there are people that are way worse way people that are that were off way worse than me so I don't want to make it seem like you know I was this complete zero to hero story but still it's it's fun to see and these concepts can be used no matter where you are on the on the ladder of feeling confident about yourself anyways moving on so i go to i go to college i um i'm, I'm really really big into self-development all of a sudden because the uh <clears throat> the uh the, the click has been made that all the rest is irrelevant so i actually dropped gaming for about a year uh, until until my education ended, I essentially dropped gaming, or at least close to when it ended. I think when I was nearly done, I picked League of Legends back up again. So I uh, I stopped gaming. I started reading a shit ton of books, and at one point, I come across uh, something called real social dynamics. And once again, for people that are for people that are like completely clueless about how to interact with the opposite sex check out those guys they essentially their job is to train men uh, in confidence and uh, social skills so very very useful if you're if you're insecure about talking to women um, anyways moving on uh, so i'd heard about that and i did a ton a ton of research and essentially that was the point when i first realized like hey this social thing is a <laughs> hat solo <laughs> whatever sorry guys this chat is being funny uh like the the social thing is is trainable uh, obviously you know i had been training shit all my life i had been bodybuilding then i had been working on starcraft working on league of legends i had been a national champion of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, of belgium etc uh, etc et i had been really good at the things i did because I put in the time, I put in the effort. So here I was like, well, if I can work on this, why not put in the time and the effort and see what it gives? Because obviously at the start, what you think is like, yeah, they kind of say that you can do that. But in the end, it's probably some guys got it, some guys don't, right? You know, you see these guys with their super swag or whatever. And that's where you figure out the side. Like some guys have it, some guys don't. And that's when you realize like, no, some guys have it naturally because they've just had positive affirmation their entire life. Uh, like if people have been telling them, like this is why, this is funny, right? This is why men or women with good looks are more confident uh, because people constantly give them good feedback. And then people, they miss link looking good with being successful with the opposite sex. For women, yes, because that's how men work, right? Uh, still, I mean, if you, whatever, that's a discussion for another time where we're going to just focus on the men right now, because I'm a man and that's what I've been through for a man, your looks are really not that important, right? Uh, it's just that men with good looks are often very confident and the confidence is what is very attractive to a woman. Uh, women are not attracted to men like men are attracted to women. Women are way more attracted to your character, how you carry yourself uh if you make you know if you make them feel safe if you make them feel comfortable uh it's way way different uh than uh <laughs> yeah that's it's, it's way different than how a man usually gets attracted to a woman we are visual creatures for us it's like oh big boobies or uh, nice body or whatever right um, i don't want to oversimplify it but just for the for the purpose of uh, making it simple right now uh, so that's the common misconception. People, people go like, well, he's good with girls because he looks good. And that's usually not the case. It's indirectly because of that. 
It's because they look good, you have confidence, and that's how that, uh, that that's how it happens. So, what you learn there, if if you if you go deep into uh, social dynamics, is you learn all these things that men that are good with women naturally do, which they're not even aware of. Uh, there's there's a lot of principles, lots of things like body language, um, just things that help you be more confident. Um, and the thing is like pretty much no one is doing this. So your competition is extremely uh, thin because there's a lot of guys that don't bother to do the effort to get good with women or that just don't know that this shit exists, right? I don't want to make a big generalization and say 99% of the guys. And also when I'm, I, I kind of snatch this percentage out of the air, but it's, it's pretty clear when, when you when you check things out, like your competition is very limited because people just don't invest enough time or effort in learning this thing properly. It's not going to go well the first time you try it. You're not going to be like, oh, so I read up on this shit. So now I can just look at a woman's eyes and her panties will drop, right? It's like, no, that's not how it works. It's a skill like anything else. Like I can tell you how to play League of Legends, but you're going to have to play it a lot to use that knowledge properly. It's the same thing like it's the same thing like talking, talking to women and making, uh, attracting women. That is a skill you need to cultivate. Somebody can tell you how to do it, uh, but in the end, it's more general concepts that need to grow on you. Uh, there is a, like, there, or rather there used to be a movement that was very on routines and stuff. Like, oh, you can say exactly this and you can do exactly that because that's what people want right they want like but tell me what to say tell me tell me what to say tell me the magic line like there is a magic line right i just don't know it right and that that's just and that that shit like that used to work up to a degree you could kind of fake confidence that's that's not good advice though you want to change yourself at the core you don't want to do like uh just some shallow fixes because that's that's another movement where People would just use use lines and routines to quote unquote trick women to think that they are uh, someone different. Uh, that's not the proper way to do it. The proper way to do it is to use these concepts, internalize them, and then uh, and then becoming a better person. Because there's also nothing wrong with this. A lot of people feel ashamed when they talk about this. A lot of people feel like, well, should I like should I not just be good at that from you know my own? Should I should I not feel ashamed for learning about this? Like, fuck no. Like, people aren't gonna expect you to learn to know how to drive a car if you've never driven a car. It's the same time if you if you're not good with women, learn how to get good with women, right? Anyways, this sounds like POA stuff. Yes, yes. And I don't think that POA stuff is bad in the right in the right frame of mind. Oh. Streams good here. Anyways, uh, let me, let me hear. Learn the art of legit complimenting, it'll help. Yes, that is true. There's nothing wrong with giving a compliment. I'm not going to go too much into detail on, on these, these things, guys, because that can be, that can be another, uh, that can be for another talk, but I can, I can say some very, very, uh, quick things like, uh, what do I have here? A lot of a lot of men, uh, especially with especially with beautiful women, uh, beautiful women uh, intimidate men. Um, they tend to put them on a pedestal, and a woman, uh, sorry, a woman will feel that immediately. If you feel like you don't deserve a woman, if you feel like you know she's like the the prettiest girl and she's She's only for like the super, super popular guy or whatever. She will feel that and it will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Whereas, and once again, this is something you need to work on. This is not something I can tell you that you will then immediately have. But uh, if you treat her as an equal and you're not afraid to, uh, how do you say this? You need to be willing to lose a girl to get her, I feel. If you at any point 
make her feel like you need her, then she will not be interested. And this is funny, right? Um, you need to you need to be able to be happy without someone, and that that feels that's that sounds weird, but by doing that, you become extremely attractive because women will want to be with a man who doesn't need them, um, who has basically the party, you're bringing the party, you're not going towards a woman and saying like, make me happy, because that's never going to work, right? So if you bring lots of good energy, if you bring lots of things that she's interested in, uh, if you can make her, her laugh, if you can, um, right, if you can, if you have your own ambitions, if you have things going for yourself, uh, that is so much more attractive than saying like, I will do anything for you, right? Like women hate that shit actually. They th like, I'm not even going to say like they think they like that because I'm not even sure. But for, for the men that think that women love men that just give them anything, that's like, especially at the start, right? At the start, that is extremely kind of repulsing when a man is just like, I will give you the world. Like they just want, it's almost like the, the less you... No, that's not a good way of saying it. I was gonna say, I was gonna say the less you are interested, the better, but that's that's the wrong way of putting it. But you guys, you guys get my vibe, right? I treat everyone equally except Shady. I get jitters when I'm going to meet him. <laughs> uh, power blast him in the face. Yeah. Mm. All people hate this. It doesn't sound like fun. Uh, what do you mean, uh, DJ Lethal? It's the level check. You have to be mature enough. That's that's obviously part of it. But anyways, guys, like I said, I'm I'm not the right person to teach that. I'm just telling you the story of how I how I got there. Essentially, what what this uh, what this does is that I had tons and tons of interactions uh, with with mainly uh, mainly women, like building your social. Uh, social skills that uh, it's up to just some some very regular it's like things you you would seem impossible but actually become super doable once you're used to it uh, at the near the near the end of my uh, education I met my current girlfriend uh, still together uh, four years in December uh, but uh, before before we were together I I would be practicing all the time and when I say practicing there people have the need to then identify that with like oh you're just using women to get better at it no that's not the truth you're you're legit offering an interesting conversation to women you're uh, you're being honest and open with them and women love that women love it when uh, uh, a man generally approaches them gives them a compliment and uh, see if they're interested in having a chat. What they don't like, of course, is a man just going like, ah, you look nice, uh, <laughs> right? It's, it's pretty funny. Just give us your sources. This sounds like David D'Angelo stuff. No, no, no. It's like I said, the, the, main, the main thing, like I've, I've read the game. I've, I've, I've actually done way too much research on that, like mystery back in the days and stuff. But the things that I'm right now uh, a fan of, like I said, is just um rsd uh rsd and well, i can't believe i'm about to leave them out uh it's two things um oh um yeah those guys of course the natural lifestyles uh james marshall uh sasha shit what's his what's his other name uh anyways if you if you look if you look up james marshall and then a sasha you'll, you'll find them uh, so James Marshall and Sasha, uh, just everyone at the 21 convention, 21 convention is, is an amazing initiative. It's essentially a men's conference where they teach you everything, right? Uh, be good with women, uh, be good with fitness, food, finances, all this shit. So that's just 21 and then convention, Google that shit. You Google chat, Google that shit. It will change your life. Uh, and then RSD, which is real social dynamics. Anyways back on topic uh, so essentially what I would do uh, for those like it was kind of an intense couple months it was just every time I saw a girl that I could be interested in 
I, whenever I was able to muster up the courage, of course, at the start, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult. Just go over to them, approach them, uh, and just strike up a conversation. And then, uh, once again, the, the, the details and stuff, well, well, we'll leave that for another time, or you can read up on that yourself. It actually comes down to see whether you have some uh, connection, see if you, know, uh, you like her, uh, she likes you, and then uh, get her phone number and see if you can set something up, right? Uh, and you would be surprised at how fast uh, that actually uh, allows you to meet interesting women. Uh, it, because, it was because of that that I actually had the freedom to choose uh, the woman I wanted to date. Whereas a lot of men, they, they come from a position of scarcity, right? They, they come to a position where they meet a woman and then they're afraid to let go because like, oh, I might not have someone else. But that's a really, really bad basics for, uh, that's a really bad basics for a relationship. You want to be in a relationship because you truly chose her and she chose you. That's, that's a really good foundation. So by having the freedom to choose, you actually make a relationship that, that can last, I feel, right? Uh, you, can, you can, of course, just luck out, right? You can find someone who is extremely compatible without doing any uh, research, but the odds are just really lower. So if you, if you, are, if you acquire the skill to approach women and talk to them, imagine how much wider the pool is of uh, women you can meet and you can potentially find uh, a good match for her and for yourself. Because in the end, you're not taking anything away from, from women when you're doing this. You're offering them the chance to meet someone who is truly working on themselves and is way more interesting than most of the men anyway, right? Because most most men don't even go through the trouble of doing this. So, uh, anyways, that's uh, that's a big that's a big uh, part of what I what I really liked. Uh, a lot of this is something I've heard of and know, but it's so much harder to practice. Yeah, light shadow. It is it is hard because this is the knowledge part and the the execution part is part of what I said, right? It all starts it all starts with uh, just doing small things. So building up this, it, it starts very, it's, it, you, the first thing you do is the, you're not going to go up to women and just be completely charming and, and talk to them and end up with, with her phone number. That's not what's going to happen the first time you talk. The first time, if, at least if you're as bad uh, at, at social interaction as I was, is you're gonna go up to someone and you're gonna give them a genuine compliment and then you're gonna feel your heart race as you just walked up to a total stranger and spoke to them and uh, gave them a compliment. Now I can't even imagine being nervous for doing that. I mean, I'm talking to the entire stream the entire day. I it's just like, I've, I've gained so much confidence in doing that. This is just someone, this is just something I want to share with you guys because it has improved my life so much. Uh, just completely being, uh, happy, not apologetic, and uh, confident about yourself. Uh, and, and it starts with very small things, just going up to someone and having a compliment. And that's, that just snowballs into you being able to do a little bit more and a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll just highlight this, definitely. Just got a snap from a girl. She said, go gay. It's easier than trying to deal with a woman. <laughs> Uh, it's once once you reach this once you reach the stage and I'm not gonna pretend like I'm some super lady killer right now or whatever but I'm at I'm at the stage where I can comfortably uh, talk uh, to women uh, well I don't need to right I've, I have my girlfriend for her, but but let's say the point where I was close to being in a relationship I, I was at the point where I could very comfortably uh, talk to women and uh, it's just it's just the skill set that by investing in that, uh, it's the same thing now. I'm, I'm just being completely open with my girlfriend as well. She knows that I can get other women. And that's very helpful for your relationship, believe it or not. At the same time, like you don't, you don't want to... Uh, this is one of those things I like, remember like... Or imagine if you're in a relationship for five years, you're both in there, you're both like, well, you can get, you can't get anyone else. Like everybody starts like dropping the ball on shit and you're just like, ah, it doesn't matter. 
but if you're like if if your girlfriend knows that you are that's that you are able to attract other women there's no reason for me to do so i'm very happy with my relationship but it also means that she doesn't uh like starts doing all kinds of crap that i don't like uh, i fell in love with who she who she is and if she suddenly turns into another person uh, she knows that I can attract other women. That's the thing, right? And once again, I have absolutely no intention to do so. And you sound like a jerk when you say it like that, right? But believe me or not, it is happy for your relationship. And the same thing with her, right? Same thing with her. Uh, if you're both confident people that have uh, no problem with attracting uh, the opposite sex, I feel like that's better for your relationship because you both, you both just, uh, especially at the start, right? At the start, you try, uh, you do a little bit more your best. Um, what else do we have here? One of your bucket list things to go up to a random stranger having a nice talk with her. Dude, like, I'm actually going to the bathroom and I'm going to tell you guys one more story and then I'm, then I'm, uh, I'm going to go away. So bear back and then we'll uh, <laughs> finish up this with a, with a nice experience. Because those are experiences that you would normally not have right some experience. i'm not gonna say like there was some super super special but this is something that that is truly that that would have not happened in my life if i hadn't studied up on social dynamics so bear back All right, here I am again. All right, there we go. Whew. Uh, here we are. Mm. Oh, right. I was gonna tell you guys one one small. Uh, one small story. Any girl here? I'm I'm sure there is one girl, <laughs> and she's sitting here, saying like this shady guy. What the fuck? Now the thing is like it's very it's very hard to explain this in because all overall this it's a good thing, right? Men learning how to be good with girls is a good thing for women. Like they get higher quality men, right? It's just that most of the time, women. I'm, and I'm not even sure if that's a problem when they learn, like that somebody learned like it was like oh he he learned how to be good like what what was he a geek before I'm not sure if I wanted to be together with a geek or uh, I'm not sure that uh, I'm pretty sure that's not how most women think but some women for sure right anyways um, what was I saying oh yeah the story that something that would have never happened if I hadn't picked up. Uh, uh, social skills so back when I was still single I like I said I was just I would I would just take every chance I could 
to uh, go out and, and talk to people and just uh, get better at social interactions. So it was one, I think a Sunday, because uh, I remember that I was, uh, I, went, I went to town actually specifically for this, to just meet, uh, meet people and talk to them. So it was a Sunday, I remember like, hmm, there's not that people out there, maybe I'll just, uh, I'll go home and at one point I, I see this girl walking in the, uh, in the it, was a, it was in Antwerp, right? It was a shopping street. And I see this, I see this girl, well, I'm just running around with my wrist thing. I see this girl and uh, I go up to her and I start talking and she says like, I don't really understand you. Like, uh, I was like, oh, I can, I can speak in English. That's awesome. Uh, turns out she was a Finnish au pair in Belgium. So she was a, a Finnish girl. She was only 19, I think. And she had already traveled to Belgium and she was living here with a couple uh, being a, a mate for... Right, well, it's a mate is just... Uh, I want to say babysitter, but I think it's like between mate slash babysitter. So pretty much someone who... Um, someone who looks after the children of busy people. So uh, it was just extremely interesting. And she was in town because it was her one day off. Sundays were her days off. And um, she, she said she wanted to see some of the city. So I was like, hell, do you want to see some of it together? And she was like, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, so we actually spent the day together uh, checking out the, the sites in Antwerp and uh, uh, showed her like a bunch of the, the sites. And I remember going to the museum uh, like of modern art. Uh, it's a really big one. I think it's 10 stories. And at the roof, they have this beautiful view. And at the end of the day, we went there onto the roof and then we just uh, shared a moment where we just uh, looked in each other's eyes and just had uh, uh, had a kiss and it's just that 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 moment of just meeting a random uh, stranger getting to know her in one day uh, knowing that she can't really stay uh, she's she's just here for the day but um, that that feeling of and like I, st I still I still have her contact details and it's it's fun to talk to her from time to time but and it's it's just that magical moment of just getting to know someone in 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 one day and and just knowing that that would have never never ever ever happened if you hadn't uh had the guts to just talk to someone this is clearly a movie well i mean I'm, I'm this is one of those things like if you're if you're used to this this is gonna sound like nothing but to me at least back then that was a big deal and i think to a lot of people who were in a similar position as me that is a big deal uh right if you're if you're if you're like you think like oh so you met a random girl and you kissed but that's it's not the thing right it's not like oh i went to the club and she was kind of drunk and we made out that's that's not the thing it's just uh meeting a woman and attracting her during the day making her laugh having fun uh, both being from different countries both knowing that she's going home at the end of the day uh but it was just it was an awesome moment right you feel sappy now <laughs> all right I think he's saying that if you don't act on things and beautiful things can happen. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing, right? And it, it's also it's also connected to each other. Uh, it's just that get do something with your life, right? Guys, <laughs> go up and talk to a stranger, guys. And the thing is, like this this doesn't have to happen every time, right? But if you if you don't, then it will never happen, right? I, I've talked to so many uh, so many women and I've had great 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 interactions um, you also have less good interactions sometimes they don't have time or just simply not interested or they say like sorry I have a boyfriend or whatever uh, and then that's still fine because I, I still enjoy talking to women it doesn't necessarily have to be to um, uh, to get their phone number or blah 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 or whatever uh, especially now, now that I'm in a relationship, I, I still enjoy that. I still enjoy that, that ability to just talk to people, get to know them. But now it's for a different reason, right? Now it's just, um, it's more just to get to know new people. I don't know. It's hard to say that, right? Because when you're single, that's also what you say. Yeah, getting to know new people. But now it's just, 
like it's like yeah getting to know new people right <laughs> now we're just like yeah i like to get to know new people and you have that skill set of just immediately putting people at ease and letting them letting them know that uh hey i'm an interesting person uh they want to spend time together uh, anyways like I, I don't have much time to do that anyway right now because i'm i'm uh i'm streaming so much and working for the stream and living alone and blah 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 so it's kind of sad that that doesn't happen so often anymore uh, but anyways guys i digress so i think that's a nice nice story to end the stream on we did a lot of uh we did a lot of uh talking today the the start was more the meat of things the the facts on working out uh your food then we went a little bit into motivation and uh now we ended up with a little bit of dating uh see if there's any um Let's see if there's any more comments in the chat. Shady's chat is suddenly in half as we're all kidnapped by people. <laughs> uh, uh. Mm, thanks for the talk. All right, see you, Siazo. 